supposed to be someplace they're not. Somebody falls asleep. I, I just want to say this is concerning. And I don't think you're that concerned, all of you, but it's okay. It's a disagreement. I feel you need to get these plants up to code in terms of we would not allow this in, we would not allow this in a lot of areas. And I'll tell you something. I served as a county supervisor, and you better pay attention to fire regulations. I was just at the Democratic Convention, which was great, in parentheses. And you should have seen the fire marshal there, seriously. Whoa. Get out of the aisle. I don't care if you're on CNN, MSNBC. You get out of the aisle. They told senators and everybody else. This isn't something we should be giving them compensatory ways to do it because then you're putting it in the charge of a human being and we know human error occurs in the best of people. So I guess what I'd like to do is not today because sir, this is kind of the first I've really learned about this and I want to thank you for this. Um, I would like to work with all of you to figure out a way. A, I think the people in these communities ought to know that their uh, nuclear uh, power plants are not in compliance. Let them start to write letters and say, hey, get into gear here and fix it up. I I've got problems. I've got problems in California. I've got my two power plants on here. We've got enough problems. We not only have the problem with the tubes, we've got this problem. So what I and to tell you that I'm going to work on with my colleagues on both sides of the aisle is sending you a letter in short order that uh, I think we need transparency. I think you ought to chastise these folks by just having a website and say, hey, go up and see who is in compliance. Let's have the good list. This is the thing that always gets me. There are so many people who are doing the right thing here. And then they look over and they're spending the money making the capital improvements, and then you have people who are putting it off until something happens, and then they'll have an excuse. And they'll say, well, the NRC said we could compensate, blah, blah, blah. And I don't want to get you into that situation. So not today, but in the next few weeks, we will, we will do a letter with some of our colleagues, hopefully on both sides, that just says, please bring the attention of this failure um, to comply with your own regulations uh, to the people, because my sense of it is, the minute my city councilmen know and my mayors know, they're going to be on the phone to, to the PG&E in the one case and SoCal Ed in the other and say, hey, hey, we don't accept this. Um, it's not right. So anyway, I just want, I don't want to end in a down note at all. I think we can work on this, and I, I really thank the staff here for all their work on this. We'll get this done. And, and I want to question on another potential danger that was recognized several decades ago, and the Commission took steps then by issuing regulations, which is my understanding may not have been fully implemented, and that is the risk from fire at a nuclear plant and the impact it could have on its uh, generation capacity uh, to prevent uh, the, um, uh, the uh, pr appropriate cooling of, of, the, uh, of the nuclear material. Uh, can you bring me up to date uh, as to where we are on, uh, on uh, proper protections at our nuclear facilities from the danger of fire? Sure. Thank you very much, Senator, for that question. Uh, nice to see you again. Good to see you. Um, Welcome to the committee as a confirmed chairman. Thank you. Chairman. Thank you. Um, in terms of fire, the staff has issued a fire protection standard and is working with licensees to implement this standard, and, and many of the licensees are actively involved in implementing this standard. And I invite my colleagues to uh, elaborate if they would like to. Also, if you could comment, because I believe there were regulations issued